Wow, the market is going absolutely crazy today. So let me get you caught up with what is going on and why it's going so crazy. In this video, we're going to talk about the top 10 hottest stock news of the day, including the feud between the short sellers and the Wall Street bets, ARK Invest's big ideas, Palantir Demo Day, a partnership with a very big golf star, and of course, Beyond Meets Partnership. We're going to talk about that plus so much more coming up. Hi, Raylaners. In this video, I'm going to show you the top 10 hottest stock news of the day to show you why the stocks are being so crazy today. And this is to save the world, help you be wealthy, and to save you time. And of course, just so you know, I have the timestamps in the description below. That way, if you want to look at a certain stock, you can just jump right ahead over to there. Let's get started. Oh, and before we start, just please press that like button for more stock news so you can be up to date with the quickest stock news and subscribe to this channel. And please let me know in the comments below if there is any stocks that you want me to do a full video on or any news that you would like me to do a full video on as well. Okay, let's get started. Stock number one, it's basically a trio of stocks, but this is ticker symbol F-U-B-O and ticker symbol S-P-C-E. This is Fubo and Space. And we're also going to talk about ticker symbol G-M-E because this has a lot to do with this. Now there's a feud between institutional and insider short sellers versus Wall Street bets on Reddit. So let's do a little deep dive into what's happening just for those of you who are curious about what's been happening with the news, the updates, so this happened about five hours ago. It says head fund Melvin Capital has closed GameStop position. So he was one of the really huge short sellers who actually was short selling GameStop for a very long time, forgot about it, and then closed that and then started shorting it again. And basically when you short a stock, you think it will go down and you think it will go lower. So essentially you're trying to make the business go under or trying to, or thinking that the business will, will fail and you're getting rich from that. It also can be a good hedge against a company that you're not too sure about or a company that's very volatile or risky. So that's why institutions and retail investors do that. But let's get to the news that just happened. So fund Melvin Capital Management, which had suffered heavy losses by betting against video game retailer GameStop, ticker symbol GME, has closed out the position and repositioned the portfolio. Now, this has been a very big controversy. Um, not many people like Melvin Capital. Melvin Capital has repositioned our portfolio over the past few days. We have closed out our position in GameStop. So this is very good. The social media posts about Melvin Capital going bankrupt are categorically false, he said. So there's been some rumors about this going bankrupt, and he says that this is false. We're not quite sure about it, but we do know that the capital fund has been bailed out by um, other institutions. Earlier this week, prominent head fund Citadel, which shorted Tesla as well, and Point72 Asset Management extended a $2.75 billion financial lifeline to the fund. People familiar with the fund said it lost almost 30% in the first three weeks of January. And just so you know, at the time of this recording, GameStop is now at $300 and it's currently at a 100% increase. Um, now, due to all of this hubbub, due to how much attention GameStop is getting to, um, basically what Wall Street bets mission is to help the little guy. So they really like GameStop. Some of them are very fervent about how much they like GameStop and how it was a childhood memory for them. So they're just trying to make sure that the company does well and it doesn't face bankruptcy. And also they really don't like short sellers because of what I had recently mentioned. Now, it's crazy that the fact that it is at $300, it was trying to get up to $100 on Monday, so this is just insane. I wouldn't be surprised if we see it go up to 400, 500. 
um, just because there's so much passion about this. But what I would like to talk about also are Fubo and Space, because they are two sympathy plays on the short seller news as well. So basically this is from Wells Fargo article saying that these are the next seven stocks that are the most shorted that could be in the next um, rally that was like GME. So this is going to be Bed Bath & Beyond, Legend, Fubo, Mac, SunPower, Car Parts, PetMed Express. Fargo believes that they will be next in line to be the next GameStop. Um, as I said, the Wall Street bets are retail investors who are on a mission to stop short sellers in their tracks from short selling exponentially and getting very incredibly rich from it. So Fubo is on that list and Fubo is actually one of my long-term holds just because I love the company so much. If you would like me to do a full video on it, please let me know because I have a lot of catalysts coming up for that. Now what I wanted to talk about was this would be a major catalyst for this stock as you can see it's gone up about 15 percent today at the time of this recording and it looks like it's just going to gap up to where it was before now fubo is actually a really great target to look out for for wall street bets because they actually had recently a short seller report and the stock just basically tumbled all the way back down to where it was before it started getting attention. So now we're seeing it rise back up again. I wouldn't be surprised if it gapped all the way up. So just be on the lookout for that and for Wall Street Bets to take a hold of it. It looks like it already is. I also wanted to talk about the Super Bowl that is coming up and this will give a lot of attention to Fubo as well. Shares of Fubo have seen three strong sessions and at one point Monday, shares of the new streaming service were up as much as 18%. The 2020 Super Bowl brought in just under 10, 100 million viewers in 2020 and 2021 is likely to set up a viewership record as the pandemic has many sports fans stuck at home instead of sharing screens at parties. Instead of deciding where to watch the game this year set for February 7th, fans will be deciding how to watch, and they're probably going to watch with Fubo. Many may feel that Fubo TV is the most dedicated streaming service for watching the game, as four out of its eight live channels are dedicated specifically to sports. Although Fubo TV is not expected to report earnings until the beginning of March, investors will be interested to see not only how many new customers the streaming service acquired in the first quarter of 2021, but also how many tuned in to watch the Super Bowl. So this could send revenue skyrocketing as skyrocketing as we know there is also a, another catalyst so be out on the lookout for the week before the super bowl because that's probably going to send fubo going up even more than it is now so just be on the lookout for that and we should be seeing an exponential increase in revenue during that time as well and then we also have SPCE. And just remember that GME is currently at a 600% increase since Wall Street Bets got their hands on it. At the time of this recording, SPCE is currently up 20%. Again, this has been basically stagnant. It's been a little bit consistent, but not really due to plenty of short sellers that were shorting the stock just because they there were very profound supports and resistance but that was blown away today and it looks like wall street bets has a target for this one as well that it looks like they're starting a position in this one right now now one major catalyst for this was during kathy wood's big ideas which was yesterday she mentioned satellite internet and hypersonic air travel as two of its big ideas. And of course we know that SPCE is a very big leader in that area. So I believe the stock is surging from that news as well. So once ARK invents creating another EF ETF called ARK X. Now this is their space exploration ETF and it was currently in the news. It sent SPCE and other space, other orbital aerospace 
stocks rising and now that she put this in her big ideas for 2021 i think it set the price skyrocketing rocketing as well so once she actually announces the arc x portfolio i believe that space will be in this portfolio and that will send and that will be a, another major catalyst now if it's not i believe the stock will go down substantially so just be careful for that i'm not there's no set date on when Kathy is expecting to present her ETF or the names, but I will send you that information as soon as I possibly can. I follow her on Twitter. She's one of my role models, so you will hear about that. Number two, we have ticker symbol ARKK. Now, for those of you who don't know, some of you have been asking me in the comments, and thank you so much for your question on YouTube. You were asking what what is ARK Invest? And they're basically a financial institution that caters to ETFs. They currently have five ETFs on the market and they're looking to have another ETF called ARK X, which is space exploration that I just mentioned. Um, so basically what they do is disruptive innovation. I absolutely love their ARK K portfolio, which is all of their 14 technologies and all of the big ideas that they have for 2021. I also love their Arc G portfolio, which is in the genomic sector. And we're all about saving the world here. So this is definitely helping to save the world. This also has the largest returns in the genomic sector and in the whole portfolio. So if you don't know what genomics is, or you're just interested in learning about genomics and in investing in genomics, but don't really understand much about it, I would definitely suggest going into Arc G. ARKG because they've researched it thoroughly and have the best genomic stocks in the market. So let's get into ARK. Let's get into the news and some upcoming catalyst for them. As I mentioned, they are creating another ARK ETF, and I think this will be a sympathy play once we understand the names of this. So it's going to be ARK X, and once we know what they're investing in, I believe ARK will go up substantially as well. So in the news, RK recently had a webinar and recently um, had a huge document of their big ideas. They do this every year just, just for people to understand what they believe is going to be the biggest disruptors in innovation for this year. So I'm going to go over the highlights of what Kathy Woods talked about. And if you want to see a full video about this, please comment below and let me know. So basically what they said that they had six new ideas that are multi-year in length with five innovation platforms involved in 14 technologies. Number one is deep learning, which occurred because the human programmer is basically out of the equation for this. So their data training machines, which is big data, iterative algorithms, and supercomputing power. So essentially, she said that machines are now training themselves through the deep learning. And thus, the training costs are going down 37% Per year. Now, this is for autonomous cars, for Alexa, for TikTok. AI models built around deep learning are increasing tenfold, so computing power is needed in the year ahead. So this is going to be huge. They say that it will scale from $2 trillion, which it is currently, to $30 trillion in opportunity in the AI space, which is a 17% kegger. By 2037, the internet will be mature and only 3% growth. So the next big thing really is deep learning and AI. Number two, server processors are a big idea. As you know, Intel, basically dominates the data center right now with 92 percent servers having their processor the x86 I believe that it will go down to 27 percent by 2030 and what will replace them is arm and risk 5 which will grow at an annual rate of 45 percent over the next five to ten years they mentioned that nvidia is trying to acquire arm from software from SoftBank, but it really just depends on China. There may be some news that 
um, institutions are getting about the delay of this and whether it might or might not happen. Um, but retail investors are not privy to that information, so I don't know much about that, but I will let you know once I find out any news. Number three, virtual worlds is a big idea. This will happen in the gaming market first. So premium games and in-house game purchases are going to be 16% of the kegger in the next five years, mostly from in-group in-gaming purchases. Basically, gaming migrated from space to another space and has been evolving ever since. And we will see this again with AR and VR with a 59% kegger. She recommends that the technology is almost there with the Oculus being sold out, so it was a success. Um, Oculus is owned by Facebook and they are doing AR and VR experiments exponentially. Number four, we have digital wallets. And Kathy Woods, I love this phrase, she basically said it was a bank in our pocket. In the US we have Cash App and Venmo, and in China is Alipay and WeChat Pay. So the pandemic basically made it go wild with e-commerce and also, believe it or not, because of the virus itself, it, there's no germs with contactless payments. And I just looked on the internet and it said that credit cards are actually as scattered with germs as urinals at a train station. So make sure that you're putting Lysol on your Visa and MasterCard. Also, the customer acquisition of digital wallets is $20 versus the banks, which is up to $1,500. I believe that Venmo and Cash App, which is $250 to $700 per user, that's how much they get from each user, if they capture the shares of banking, institutions, and brokerages, uh, they can scale that to $20,000 per user in the next 10 years. And this is basically half from e-commerce. Number four for the big idea is Bitcoin. We've seen many institutional investors um, go into Bitcoin through the grayscale GBTC because the SEC has a lot of rules about Bitcoin and not many invest institutional investors, especially mutual funds, are actually allowed to be in Bitcoin. So they use grayscale and other companies that are using Bitcoin. Also, major corporations are substituting Bitcoin for cash, and this started with a company called MicroStrategy. Square is also using 5% of its assets in Bitcoin, and PayPal and Cash App enable buy and sell on Bitcoin on their platforms. And last month, the OCC allowed banks to become nodes on any public blockchain to enable less costs and more efficiency for settlements. So basically Bitcoin is going into the more traditional banking sector for settlements and you can do this globally as well. And this is for Fidelity, ICE, CME, and Cambridge. The potential here is huge. If we see institutions going in deeper with Bitcoin, if they want a minimum volatility, it can go up to $200,000 in price. And if they want maximum sharp ratios or maximum exposure, it can go up to 500,000 in price. There was also mentioned of the new SEC Ginsler, who is actually very pro Bitcoin and that's because they understand it more. What I've found in my walk of life is that if you understand Bitcoin a little bit more, you're more invested in it. And for those who don't understand it are very anti-Bitcoin. So I think the more that people know about it, the better it is. And right now, institutions are using it to hedge against any inflation that we may see in the future. Number five, EV. So 2020 EV sales were at $2.2 million, which was a 25% increase, and traditional automobiles were uh, decreased. This has happened two years in a row, and they think it will continue down that path. EV Kager is at an increase of 82% per year for the next five years because they believe the costs will continue to decline. And actually, as EVs are declining in price, they believe that traditional cars will be stagnant. So eventually, EV cars will be less expensive than traditional gasoline cars.
There's also an opportunity with ride hailing and specifically autonomous ride hailing. Right now, it's a $150 billion industry with not autom autonomous cars, and that costs about $2 per user per mile. Once we start having autonomous ride hailing, it could cost 25 cents per mile. So there's a big opportunity for that. They believe there will be a $150 billion industry to a six trillion dollar industry by 2030 and autonomous taxi platforms will be valued at four trillion dollars you guessed it <laughs> tesla is in the running to start with this they're probably going to start with regular taxi hailing services but they will go into autonomous um byd is also doing this as well number six drones now this is not a very new idea but they're putting uh, more investments into this um once they see the collapse in delivery costs and hardware costs and the ai is intelligent enough to be propelled into the air they see this as a huge growth opportunity and they see the scaling um, the parcel drones to 114 billion dollars in 2030. Now number seven is what we talked about earlier it's orbital aerospace and the first one is satellite enabling connectivity for three billion people who don't have broadband access and there's actually 42 million people in the U.S. which I did not know about who do not have broadband access so this is a huge opportunity as well once the satellite costs are down and so are the rocket launching costs there's going to be a huge convergence and the TAM for this or the total addressable market opportunity for this um, in the U.S. alone with 42 million people is $10 billion and $40 billion globally. So this is huge. They saw some success with the Falcon 9 booster, which is a reusable rocket that was found with SpaceX. And they've done nine visits of this so far. So they're in the uh, development stage, but they think this is essential. Number two is hypersonic uh, flight. This is again, the orbital aerospace. It's a $270 billion opportunity annually. Their estimates are very conservative. Um, now, if you don't know what this is, basically it's just a very fast plane. So imagine going from where I am in New York City all the way to the other end of the earth, uh, China, and that would take you about two hours instead of 19 hours. And of course, you would pay a lot more for that. Number eight, 3D printing. So basically this has been beaten down so much due to the vaccine. Everything was stopped. Um, this is a very high priced environment, but they say it will scale 60% annualized rate in, in the next five years. And this will be due to the aerospace, which will accelerate it. So it's a huge opportunity. Number nine is genomics, and this can be found in the ARC-G fund as well as the ARC-K fund. I believe a long read sequencing is ready, and that ticker symbol PACB is the leader in long read sequencing. To sequence a whole genome is about $1,500 currently, and the CGS is about $1,500 as well. They noted that the detection of cancer for very, very early stages in liquid biopsies is good for short reads. They believe the market will move to long read sequencing, except for the liquid biopsies and have a kegger of 82%. Multi-screening tests is also a big idea. It will soon be for all 40 year old adults and up and cost less and the DNA sequencing will cost less. This will help find cancer earlier in the future. This is a $150 billion market. And as far as curing cancer is concerned, gene therapies are the next frontier. So we have allogenic, which is off the shelf cells, is a lower cost way of fighting cancer because they basically um, transplant that into a cancer patient's body and it's trained to fight cancer. They believe this will explode the market oncology gene therapy uh, by 20 times 
And all of this will cause a $260 billion market. So it's a huge growth opportunity. Um, they've seen some success in trials and in early stages. Now, when I think of this, I think of exact sciences. I think of edit. I think of GH. I think of TMO, Selectus, and Fate Therapeutics. So what's the big idea? So for RK, just look out for those catalysts of Kathy Woods um, going into several different stocks. It should send her RK portfolio going up exponentially. And I would just follow her on Twitter on Twitter for latest updates. Um, once her email comes out every single day, you can sign up for that to see what she's trading daily. She's very transparent and it usually sends the stock price up. Also, they have a very big exposure in Tesla and in CRISPR. So if there's any big news about that, just be aware that the stock price of ARK-K will go up for that one as well. Number three, we have ticker symbol PLTR, Palantir. They just had demo day yesterday and they are currently at an increased price of 11% at $39. We did see $40 a little bit ago. Um, they call themselves Palantarians and there's actually a big cult going on with them for all the right reasons. Um, this is amazing. I saw a demo day yesterday and it just basically reminded me of a video game of Call of Duty or something like that. It was very high tech and very futuristic and I'm so proud of them for all of their technology. This company has been around for about 20 years and it serves um, public as well as private sectors. They have a unique niche that ARK Invest is, has a small position in. And their main unique niche is with the government on and off the battlefield. I have some highlights for this as well as an upcoming catalyst that I think will move this stock forward. We've talked about this in previous videos. If so, if you want to check out my previous videos, just look at my channel and search for a Palantir. For those of you who don't know, their technology is Apollo, Foundry, and Gotham. They invest a lot of research and technology into Foundry and Gotham. And basically, Apollo connects it all together and makes sure that it is on the cutting edge technology and makes sure that it is upgraded. They basically make sure that it's an operating system for modern enterprises. They say their main platform turns companies into alpha and they basically automate beta to become an alpha enterprise. So this basically makes you one step ahead of your com your competitors at all time, whether on the battlefield or in business. Foundry is for the public sector and for business. So we will just talk a little bit more about Foundry. We are an operating system for the modern enterprises. One of the biggest investment areas over the past few years has been modulation. We pride ourselves on end-to-end -end solutions and customers can basically pick and choose what they want in Foundry and just build upon that. They don't need everything that Foundry offers. Foundry also provides ontology and simulation engine to preserve local governance. And they basically use the simulation energy to connect it to maps, which can flow from and back into enterprise apps and solutions. The ontology and resulting actions train the engine, which allows simulation or what if scenarios. This can be based on AI or simple logic. So they want to integrate the human experience with technology experience. I love what they said in one of their philosophies is giving people an Iron, Iron Man suit. So connecting AI to the human, not fully replacing the human. Models are bound to real world inputs and outputs. I love the quote that they said. They said, what took months now takes hours. And this was especially vital with the pandemic because especially in the government sector, I'm a patriot and I love patriots, but they're not the quickest. So um, what they did was allow Palantir to come in and set them up in literally hours so they can get the, the best solutions in the fastest time possible. They also talked about data integration, which takes raw data from many streams, joins and featurizes it. And they also have a roadmap, which reach more customers through use case catalog. And they talked a lot about modularity, interoperability with data platforms or build third party apps on top of Foundry as a data 
meta platform. They recognize that multi-cloud is the future. The second product we have is Gotham and Gotham is basically used for the battlefield and for the U.S. national defense. Um, they do have a contract out for the armor that they're using for that the government is currently using. That's a major catalyst if they get all four phases of the contract. I talked about that in a previous video, so be out on the lookout for that because that could provide a huge revenue and a huge spike in the price. The current problem is that the government has a tremendous elephant amount of data and they said that more data doesn't always equal better decisions because humans can't really absorb all of the information that is given to them to make the best solutions in split second decisions when they need to do that to basically save the country. So basically Gotham to get those better decisions uses AI and fuses and augmented and augments data to provide the best data the most up-to-date data and give the, that data to the person that needs to make the decision in a split second decision it's to decide in less time. And you can explore the options, see your choices and see what will happen if you take those choices. We talked about that it can be used in combination with Edge. And now when we think of Edge, we think of the military not being able to use it. It's very spotty. You can't use it anywhere. With Gotham, you can use this underwater. You can use this in flight. You can use this in the desert. It can be used anywhere and you get very up-to-date, real-time, incredible service. They say, we build Iron Man suits, not robots. The third platform is Apollo. They manage the end-to-end -end of platform operations. It synchronizes, it maintains incredible performance, cutting-edge technology, and the safety and security of both of the platforms. They're building it now to create the multi-cloud that we were speaking about earlier, and they want it for either public or private sector. They want to be the world's only SaaS provider for the Department of Defense level six security applications. So this is just a brief overview, but I was very excited to see all of this. Now, one of the main catalysts was this day and you saw the spike in the price, but I also think that institutional investors are a little bit more cautious. So they're going to research it more if they like what they saw. So there should be a little bit more spike in the price for the upcoming week. Also, they have earnings report on February 11th, which will be very telling. Number four, we have ticker symbol DS. Now DS and ticker symbol ELY have been on pretty much a rampage for the past. Eli is definitely a sympathy play, I would say. But DS or Drive Shack actually is currently up 16% because they announced a collaboration with a pro golfer, a leading owner and operated of golf related leisure and entertainment businesses announced today that it is partnering with global golf superstar Rory McIlroy on its entertainment golf brand Puttery. This is the company's new indoor small format entertainment system experience that will feature a high tech mini golf and premium food and beverage offers. Now, I think this is great because of the pandemic. You can do this indoors or outdoors, and there's a lot of spatial awareness. I am thrilled to partner with the Drive Shack team on their new entertainment golf experience. Once the, the pandemic is under control, the ability to combine high-tech mini golf with a high-quality food and beverage menu will make puttery a great experience for any social gathering. I am personally making a financial investment in the growth of future puttery venues. We are so excited to partner with Rory McIlroy as we near the launch of our first puttery venue in Dallas this summer. So that's another catalyst to look out for. I know this is um, pretty long-term, but it's definitely a good long-term hold, especially for the summer. If they're opening up their first puttery in the summer of 2021, there will be a huge buzz about that. This is currently a penny stock at $3.27, so I would jump on this now. Thinking about partnerships, we have number five, BYND. Beyond Meat recently partnered with Pepsi. 
So Beyond Meat and Pepsi are combining forces to develop and distribute snacks and drinks made with plant-based protein as the plant-based trend gains even more traction. I think that this is going to be the future of plant-based proteins. With Pepsi, Beyond Meat, which already makes plant-based alternatives to beef and pork and also chicken, will have access to a global distribution and marketing powerhouse. So basically they're going to have new products in their pipeline. The US joint venture may include a future expansion into China and the United Kingdom. Pepsi could help push that marketing to a new level and bring more customers into the fold because their marketing has been quite nominal. And of course, Pepsi will gain from this to get a piece of the plant-based protein pie. I think this is a really good partnership. Um, I'm not very excited about plant-based proteins in drinks, um, but I do like the quality and I do like the taste of Beyond Meat. For those of you who don't know, I am a vegan. So I love Beyond Meat. I love Tattooed Chef. I love very, very good foods. Um, I think that's where the industry is heading. I think that's where the health sector is heading. So I think I will have to try this, have to try this out when it comes out. So I think some huge catalyst for this is going to be once they talk about their products that they're going to be launching. And also once they talk about the products from their Taco Bell um, partnership that they will be talking about. They also currently have four other partnerships that they um, should be talking about and should be going down the pipeline. So they have many products that they are going to be announcing. So just look out for that. Number six, we have ticker symbol NNDM. I know I talk about this a lot, but it's worth talking about. Right? This is in the 3D printing sector. It's actually current currently at negative 9%. I think it's at a healthy pullback right now. So Nana dimensions, um, for those of you who are shareholders, you probably received that in an email. There is going to be a general meeting of shareholders on February 15th at 4 p.m. Israeli time. The board of directors unanimously recommends that you vote in favor of the proposal unanimously, which is described in the attached proxy statement. Shareholders of record at the close of business on January 27th today. <laughs> are entitled to announce of and vote at the meeting, either in person or by appointing a proxy to vote in their stead. So this proposal is to increase the company's regist registered share capital. Accordingly, after giving effect to the increase of share capital, the authorized share capital of the, com of the company will be NIS 2.5 billion divided into 500 million ordinary shares. So they basically are asking for twice as many shares instead of 1.25 billion to 2.5 billion. So basically it's a doubling of shares. Um, now this would be great for long-term growth because you will get a lot of long-term investors. We've seen them do seven offerings already. So it looks like they're trying to do an acquisition potentially, which would be really amazing. Um, so look out for a catalyst for that. But on February 15th, which is the meeting date, they will have an approval or not have an approval. Um, that should be a potential catalyst, whether good or bad. I expect that if they do get more shares and if they do get this approved, then it will be a nice boost in the price. And if it's not, it's a great opportunity to buy a dip for a long-term hold because this company is trying to do the best it can to make as much equity as it can for R&D and for a potential acquisition. So this is another clue for an acquisition. I love it. So number seven, we have ticker symbol BNGO and they just did the Festival of Genomics. This is another uh, biotech and they deal with genomics. This has been in the news a lot. <laughs> And they have a really wonderful Twitter feed, so go follow them on Twitter. Um, this was actually brought from my Twitter feed that a lot of you were wondering about this and would like me to put this in the news quite frequently. So if you want to join my Twitter, we do recent updates in news. Really fun over there, so you should you should join. <laughs> At the time of this recording, it's uh, currently 
11% down. And I just wanted to talk about this because there's been some great developments from the Festival of Genomics and Biodata. Um, I think this is going to be a leader in the genomic space, and I know that it only a penny stock right now. Arc Invest has not invested in it right now. Um, they haven't mentioned it, but there's a lot of research, research going behind the scenes. And whether they invest in it or not, I personally, I personally think that it's a good company. So BioNano CMO presents a vision for optical genome genome mapping as a first-line clinical tool for cancer and genetic disease testing at Festival of Genomics and Biodata. She presented evidence supporting her vision of OGM with Sapphire, Sapphire is their product, as a first-line test in genetic disease and cancer. So this is really good. We were talking about the liquid biopsies with ARC, but this can also be a detection. As a first-line test, OGM would be the first test applied to diagnose the patient and to determine their prognosis and management strategy. She demonstrated that OGM detects all classes of SVS, including actionable variants in cancer. With respect to genetic disease, she discussed how OGM is the only cytogenomic method that can detect all CVS classes unlike the previous ones that are still used today, which are very, very old, <laughs> which need to run in parallel or sequentially and the data combined. So you only need to use one product instead of all three. OGM can correctly identify micro deletion and micro duplication syndromes automatically analyzed as part of the Saphir's whole genome analysis. Um, so basically they're saying that it's more precise and that they can read sequences that um, not many methods can read and they can find rare diseases. She presented cases of leukemias and solid tumor demonstrating OGM's ability to precisely define breakpoints and fusion partners of genomic rearrangements without the need for tiered testing and confirmatory follow-up tests. This is a next generation cytogenomics tool in both genetic disease and cancer. She believes that Sapphire's potential is to revolutionize cytogen cytogenomic testing with a single assay that provides actionable results faster. It's abundantly clear that Sapphire is a key part of the future of cytogenomics and is here to stay. So I mean, that's pretty cool, right? The more webinars that they do, the more that people understand about their machines and understand about Sapphire, the more that the price will go up. Number eight, we have ticker symbol A-R-A-Y. So this stock is actually under the radar for a lot of people because not many people are talking about it. According to this Zach's article, they actually released encouraging breast cancer study results. So this is a stock that I would definitely put on your watch list. Definitely undervalued, definitely under the radar for a lot of people. And I think institutions are just trying to research this a little bit more. So let's get in before they do. Array recently released promising data from a perspective. And now this is promising data, which is a good opportunity if you like this company to buy in at the dip. Phase two trial of 338 women with low risk breast cancer, which is good because again, it's the early detection that ARK Invest was talking about. The data from the study showed that 98.9 8% of the women have local disease control post receipt of once daily accelerated partial breast radiation, APBI, delivered with the tomotherapy system after seven years. So they're cancer free after seven years, which is very it's amazing at a 98% rate. Additionally, the study, which has been published online as well, reported that the once daily schedule related to a very low incidence of acute and late toxicities. Notably, the TUM therapy platform that comprises the next generation Ridixax system is the world's first platform capable of helical radiation delivery. The platform provides precision that allows clinicians to deliver APB with a lot more confidence, so it's more precise. This development is likely to provide a boost Accuray's tomotherapy platform, which accounted for around 85% of revenue unit volume in the first quarter of fiscal 2021. It is noteworthy to mention here that breast conserving surgery and APB 
have been widely utilized in clinical practices for treating low-risk breast cancer over the past 10 years. Accurize trial provides enhancements over existing techniques, thereby offering improved APBI outcomes in carefully selected patient groups. So again, this is just a first glimpse at the study. I think it shows tremendous potential. And as it noted, this is 85% of the revenue. So I think if we see some good data, then it will definitely show a huge spike in the earnings report. So that's definitely a catalyst to look out for. It looks like a very promising stock. This is one to put on your watch list as well. And this came from the poll in my Twitter account. You guys asked for this one if you want to see a full in-depth video on it, please leave a comment below. Just the ticker symbol, let me know what you would like to see in a full video. Now for number nine. For number nine, we have ticker symbol OSTK, and now I really want a vegan steak. I don't know if there's actually vegan steaks. So currently it has spiked not that much today, um, but it spiked a lot yesterday. They partnered with Pelian Venture Partners to oversee Medici Ventures blockchain assets. So this is all about Bitcoin. They're heavily invested in Bitcoin and they actually allow their customers to use Bitcoin to buy products. Overstock said Monday that it will be converting Medici Ventures Inc its wholly owned blockchain focused subsidiary to a limited partnership. The company added that an entity within Pelion Venture Partners, a third party venture capital firm, will act as the general partner of the fund. There was a huge price change. And as you know, um, last year they did have a big um, management change and it's basically made the price of the stock go up a lot in value. I think they're doing very well with this company and I think we will see a lot more with their blockchain platform, with their um, Bitcoin. So that was the news for yesterday and then for today T0 announces platform evolution in partnership with Prime Trust. T0 is a technology firm with the goal of democratizing access to private capital markets. T0 is a subsidiary of Medici Ventures, which we just talked about, the blockchain-focused, wholly-owned subsidiary of Overstock.com. So this is very influential with Overstock.com. It's basically who owns the company. T0, a lead a leader in blockchain innovation and liquidity for digital assets announced today its partnership with Prime Trust, the leading provider of all-in-one financial infrastructure for fintech innovators. This partnership sends a clear signal to the market that T0 is committed to replacing legacy systems with the future of financial technology. So it's basically um, making the transaction seamless between Bitcoin and its potential uh, companies. So as I said, they're expanding into Bitcoin and making it easier for customers to buy and sell with Bitcoin. So just look out for more catalysts as far as Bitcoin and cryptocurrency has occurred has occurred, especially if there's news on Bitcoin, you should see a sympathy play with Overstock. And last we have number 10, which is ticker symbol KRTX. This is also under the radar, but it brought my attention about a week ago and I wanted to just talk about it in the news because there's a lot of news that's covering this. There's a lot of major catalysts um, and you probably haven't heard of it because this is very under the radar as well. Although there are several institutional investors that have invested in this, including BlackRock and Vanguard. Currently it's at a price of $95. And just so you know, there are six buys from institutional investors. Oppenheimer gave this a buy rating. William Blair remains a buy. And this is a recent article from Yahoo Finance. And it's basically saying that this stock is ready to bounce. So Wells Fargo is very bullish on this company. They said, we will start with Corona Therapeutics, a specialty pharma company whose focus is mental health. So they basically talk about schizophrenia schizophrenia and DRP, which is um, dementia. With a potential patient base exceeding 2.7 million people, there, this is a large market. And the state of current treatment options is widely considered less than satisfactory. I believe Karuna, through my research, can do just that. Um, they did partner with Eli Lilly, which is another well-known company. So I think they're in good hands. 
Karuna is currently enrolling the pivotal Phase 3 Emergent 2 study of its leading drug candidate, CAR-XT, for the treatment of acute psychosis in adults with schizophrenia. Volunteers for DRP remain on track for quarter 2, 2021. So that's a major catalyst once they finalize the results for this for quarter 2 of 2021. We think the pipeline has been de-risked and we like the risk reward at these levels. It's a low risk, high reward type scenario. To this end, Hughes rates the stock an overweight and his $163 price target implies an upside of 59% for the coming year. And as, as I said, there's a unanimous six buys with an average price target of $138, a 35% upside from its current price, and it's actually a little bit more today. So this is something to keep on your radar. I would love to do a full video on this one because I think it has a lot of potential, and as they said, it's very low risk. Um, so just leave a comment below and let me know what you think about this one. Should I make a full video on it? As always, thank you so much for watching. You just watched the top 10 hot stock news of the day. Please leave a comment below and let me know which stocks you would like me to do a full in-depth video on so you don't miss out on any great juicy stocks that have a huge upside that are very long term. And please leave a comment down below letting me know what else you would like to see as far as investing goes and please leave a like and subscribe to this channel i love every single one of you go out and make some money and be wealthy and save the world bye railiners